Welcome to Epistemology Online, where the idea is to get people to articulate what they believe to be true and false, good and evil, and their rationale behind it. Hopefully a different way of discourse online. This is part three of three, talking with John. He flips the script and asks me some questions. Okay, 15 minutes is on the clock whenever you're ready, man. Cool, yeah. Uh, because I was interested when you commented, and you were very vague about not saying where you actually stood on the issue. Um, I wonder, I wonder what you think. Like, so what do you think is the purpose of government, or what, what does a legitimate government what is it role in society? Sure. So I think a good thing to probably define would be what is government and how would you define it? And I'll make sure that it lines up with what I would call government as well. What is government? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, I'd say it's, that's actually a really good question because a lot of people don't really think about it. what are these terms we're talking about? Um, mm -hmm. A government would be a form specifically. There's different types of forms of government. We know that that governs, <laughs> there's the root word for government, mm -hmm. governs the life of any community, commonwealth, society, um, sets the laws. I think lawmaking is an important factor of government. So legislates, it legislates, it um, governs, and it adjudicates between disputes between the people in the government. Okay, I'm going to fire back a definition in like seven-year-old language and see if you still agree with it uh, because there yeah. were other terms that I would then want to define further and we'd probably hit an infinite regression of defining. A government <laughs> is a group of people who claim to have the, the right, uh, the moral rights, this is a key component of it, to use force uh, to accomplish a goal um, whenever force has not been initiated. That sounds like a scary government. <laughs> the right to use force. <laughs> Not necessarily, you know, like somebody has the right to use force to uh, protect uh, somebody who's, well, actually, no, that my definition would eliminate the idea of like protecting somebody because it's initiatory force. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's the defining characteristic of a government. Um, if you have If you have an example where it, that's not the case, be happy to hear it out. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying, like, I can accept your definition. It's just the emphasis on use of force. I mean, of course, a government should be powerful enough to fill it, which in my opinion is to protect its citizens' rights. Um, so it needs to have force, but just I, hesitant to use it, maybe. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I, I think that's the defining characteristic, because if I take away the initiatory force out of it, then you could have private institutions do the same kind of thing. Uh, individuals so it, could do the same kind of thing. I think it's the initiation of force it, is, the, is the defining characteristic. Is the initiation against its subjects or citizens or external polities like other governments? I love the fact that you just said polity in a casual conversation. Yes. Um, yes, outside it's groups and people. inside groups. I would posit both. Okay. Does does this government have to have some force on its own citizens? Sorry, it broke up a little bit. Does government what have to have something on citizens? Does it need to have justification? Like, does this government follow its own laws? Uh. Or in the definition, so just to clarify, just trying to define what is a government, I, I think somebody could argue that a government could be any different way. Um, That's, true. That's true. A lot of governments you, don't follow their own laws. Yeah. You could have a, you know, a, a dictatorship as a form of government, which he says you cannot, uh, you know, do X, but then does X anytime the dictator wants. No, you're completely right. So would you agree with the definition of government thus far? Yes. If that is an agreed upon definition, I would posit that governments are illegitimate because they initiate force upon people. I think the initiation, and this is this is the argument, I think um, the initiation of the use of force is always morally wrong. That is my that is my rock to stand upon. I think that's right. I think that's right because from point 
there's such a thing as conquest and use of force in what is it a just war and the definition that most people have kind of settled on is that you cannot be the aggressor and still be waging a just war as soon as you're the aggressor it's illegitimate um so only justified uses of force are in defense really I would agree with that because that's that's how we treat it as an individual. You know, it's it's never um, I'm going to go shoot that guy because he pissed me off. It's the only reason I would shoot somebody is if there's an imminent threat to life. Yeah, you know, like he the other guy is using force in some way, shape, or form. It, it's not like yeah. I disagree with his flavor of ice cream. Therefore, let's go <laughs> smoke him. Yeah, yeah. So, in defense of yourself or others is, is what you're saying. Basically. Yeah, I think you could transfer that uh, that uh, moral right to defend yourself to a third party. You could, you know, if you're a little old lady and you're having a hard time getting your purse back, you can call the strapping young Cason to come over and help you out. I think you could do that morally. So, do you think basically all government is illegitimate because all government deserves the right to initiate force? Kind of. I would posit any – because fundamentally governments are a group of individuals. Uh, would you agree with that statement first? Yeah. Okay. So I would posit that a, a group of individuals cannot have a right that an individual of that group does not have. And a right that I don't believe anybody has is the right to initiate force. Like there is no license to kill in the 007 lore. Yeah. I agree with that. And yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> That's so interesting. I would have thought you would you would not have agreed on it based on the previous video whenever we were talking about the Constitution, and you said, well, at some point, you know, as long as people can uh, consent, and then at some point you can have kind of like a lack of consent at some level, and it would be right for people to be bound uh, by a, a government's ruling. Yeah, so, so in my opinion... What does a, a lawful use of force by a government look like? That is like in America, um, so a serial murderer or something like that goes out and starts killing other citizens. He's, a, he's the aggressor. He's using unjust force against other people. At that point, the government, since that citizen consented to live under these laws, since he broke these laws by invading the rights of other people, that government force to stop him whether that's just arresting him with police forces <laughs> so like enforcement um then i think that's justified sure that's defensive force as a third party i'm saying that they would have to initiate force before somebody initiates for before somebody uses force they'd have to be the initiator and that that would be the only time whenever i'd say that is immoral and i would further posit that um that happens often it yeah <laughs> Like preemptive force, <laughs> preemptive <laughs> force, as, uh, or perhaps the idea of uh, a threat of force, um, such as cough up a little money, or else there's going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I think that's wrong. <laughs> but that's currently how I think everything in government is paid for, right? With a threat of force, like give us money, or else we'll throw you in a jail. So, so ta by taxation, like you have to pay taxes or else we use force against you. Yeah. So I you think, think that'd that's, be that's, extortion. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you can make that argument. I don't follow you there because I do think as a citizen, you, through your representatives, you did consent to pay these taxes. And since you consented through your representatives, it's not that if, think citizens do a, do a terrible, terrible job and our representatives do a terrible, terrible job of basically selling us out and raising taxes on us. They do that and then we fail over and over again to unelect them and elect new people who won't do that to us. <laughs> and probably because they convinced us that's a good idea, which is not. <laughs> right. Um, would you so really it, it hinges back to the individual's consent and that my assertion is that consent is not given and your assertion is that consent has been given would you agree with that 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I guess it matters to define consent uh, to, to answer that. I think that definition would solve a lot of things. I would say consent is the willingness or agreement for something to happen. Would you agree with that? Yeah, honestly, I have not dug into that. So it's a little new territory, but generally, yeah, I agree with you that you would have to agree for it to happen. Can you uh, kind of consent one time and then basically make your consent nullified? Like, um, I forever promise to uh, give you my consent to whatever decision you make for me henceforth. Um, is that like a, is that okay? No, no. And that's the whole point of elections is to continually give your consent. And we do. And we're stupid for doing it. <laughs> Whenever you say we do, who do you mean? Like, I may not have participated in like the local election lately, right? So does that mean that I am participating? If you don't vote, well, one, you're actually not participating. Um, which is, I think is kind of its own problem, which I don't, I wouldn't blame people for not voting because the choices we have are terrible. Um, but if you don't vote, then you're kind of forfeiting your consent because you're just saying, I will go along with where all the other voters agree without putting my voice in there. Um, I don't know if I'd call that consent though. That, well, yeah, I wouldn't call it. That's a good question. I, I guess it's kind of, it's, you're given the opportunity to consent and you don't. So you forfeit it. Does that mean you don't consent? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it, it's something, I guess it's something that I think about a lot. There's a reason why my wall behind me is black and yellow. <laughs> um, I can tell you about it some other time. But did you ever see Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Not a non sequitur, I promise. I haven't seen it. I've heard about it. I haven't seen it. So in it, within the first five minutes or so of the film, an alien race lands outside of uh, the planet Earth and they're like kind of hovering and they announce on a loudspeaker, we've had these plans on display for the past couple thousand years. We're going to demolish your planet to build an interstellar highway. You had your time to disconsent. That time is passed and they blow up Earth. I think of yeah. that whenever I think of like the concept of whenever you said that if you don't vote, you are kind of tacitly consenting to just go along with whatever the majority decides or, or the electoral college decides if we're talking presidential or whatever. Um, but I don't think that's a valid way of viewing it because I'm, I'm actively saying I'm not willing to participate in this because I don't think that any person can fundamentally represent me in any better way than I can represent myself in a day to day. Yeah. That's a hard question, and it's hard to argue with. Um, I, I don't have an answer for that. I'll, I'll be honest. That's okay. Maybe it's something to mull over or whatever, because I, I think that... I think the definition of consent and the application of it is probably the difference between a moral and just government and an immoral and unjust government. Yeah. Yeah, I think any government that's not formed based off consent is unjust, immoral, illegitimate. Um, and in this particular case, if, if you're not consenting by not voting, you might have an argument to be made that the government shouldn't have authority over you, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, like the thing I say is just get consent involved in taxation and pretty much everything else falls into place is like my practical rebuttal, I guess. Yeah. Um, whenever people are like, well, wouldn't you want clean drinking water? It's like, yeah, I would totally pay for that 100%. <laughs> yeah. If it was like, hey, don't you want to have this uh, social program that studies or not social, the scientific program that studies the effects of this thing on uh, – what was the, there was some kind of bird egg that was being studied. It was like a $3 million study. It's like, probably not, probably wouldn't pay for that. Yeah. Um, well. Yeah. So that, that's, I think that, I think we've reached the point of, I don't think there's a way to necessarily na navigate that until there's like a clear argument uh, on like, what is consent? And then is government getting that consent? Um, 
Or you, yeah. you said formed, is that right? It, it only has to be formed. It doesn't have to be continually, like consent of the governed is at the beginning, not at every stage of the process? It does have to be formed, but it also has to be continually given. And under the Constitution, the way that happens is through elections. If you don't participate in the elections, that's that's a new question. I don't know. <laughs> Awesome. Well, hey, that's our 15 minutes. I hope you had some fun uh, kind of questioning me on the other side of things. So, but uh, yeah. So anything else to talk cool. about right now before we wrap up? I don't know. I think you stumped me with that one. <laughs> My goal is not to stump, but to get people to think. And I think <laughs> that's ironic. My really? goal is to get people to think. And yeah. my goal <laughs> of thinking, no. Nah. Um, yeah. My hope is that people think about what they... Uh, talk about and believe cool i think that's important i don't think enough people do it and if they do it's really ugly <laughs> yeah <laughs> a lot of discourse has gotten really nasty lately i mean you can see this with the riots around the country it's very concerning very concerning it's all about partisanship fanboys party politics Stupid. Yeah. anyway <laughs> Cool. So, well, uh, all that being said, are you happy with all three of them? Good enough for your? Do you consent to them being published and all that jazz? I give you my consent. Yes. <laughs> cool, man. Uh, well, until next time. And if you if you think of a topic or whatever that you want to talk about, I'm hoping to do more of these. Or if you find somebody that maybe like you think would be fun for me to chat with, I'd I'd love to do that. Cool. Yeah. No, I'll keep it in mind, and you have my info. So. There you go. Cool. Well, till next Thanks. time, be well. You too. Talk to you later. Peace out. My hope is that people can start listening to what other people are saying and try to understand like how they're thinking. That's kind of my yeah. goal.